Hello everyone, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a tutorial on C programming and in this tutorial we will be taking an example to look at the, to look at and illustrate the for loops in a much more elaborate way. And today we actually as a part of the example we are going to look at the Lawrence butterfly. Now many of you many of you people might not know what a Lawrence butterfly is, so let me open this up, open this Wikipedia page to explain what it is. Lawrence system is actually a set of ordinary differential equations. It was given by the mathematician Edward Lawrence, okay, and uh, he actually developed this equation to explain, uh, I mean, to give a simplified explanation of the atmospheric convection. That atmospheric convection, you see, uh, when you when because of the heating and because of the temperature gradient and pressure that is existing in the atmosphere, um, La Edward Lawrence tried to understand the periodic patterns in it and what periodic patterns in it and the non-periodicity and non-linearities in it. And when he came up with a very long explanation, very long derivation and simplifications and approximations, okay, it's a very long story, very long uh, mathematical de de mean derivation. But once you simplify that, you'll come up with a simple. Th you'll come up with these three equations over here: dx by dt equals sigma y minus x, dy by dt equals x times rho minus z minus y, and then dx dz by dt equals x y minus beta z. So you will come across these three equations, and these three equations are actually called as a Lorentz system of equations. This helps us to understand. Math, uh, I mean, if you know the background behind uh, what how this came up, you'll be able to understand the behavior of the atmospheric circulation. Okay, and here x y z are uh, x y z are actually the make up the system state. Or I mean, if you just take this purely in dimension, x y z are something like dimensions, but in the atmospheric context. X, Y, Z have um, a mean uh, have different meanings. Like one of them is an equator. I mean, uh, uh, temperature gradient, meridional temperature gradient, and all. So we don't have to go in detail. For this example, you don't have to. For this program, we don't have. You need to know in detail. What we need to know is that we need to know how to uh, write this in a numerical methods format. Okay. And if you plug uh, and uh, sigma, rho, and beta are some system parameters. And we plug in these values: sigma to be 10, beta to be 8 by 3, and rho to be 28. Okay, yeah, rho to be 28. We will get this nice butterfly-like, uh, three-dimensional butterfly-like figure, and we um, are explaining a chaotic behavior. One sample solution, and this is actually called this is actually the called as the classical Lorentz butterfly, Lorentz butterfly, the Lorentz attractor uh, solution. We are going to generate this. Uh, first, we are going to do by we are going to ca numerically integrate these equations using C and get the values out, and then we are going to use Python to plot them up. Okay. So before I go into the model and explain, before before we start writing the program, I will thought of explaining you all how this um, how this equation is numerically uh, integrated. You can use many methods. I'm just going to use a simplified, a simplified uh, method, which is actually the Runge Kutta first order scheme, or the Euler forward method, whichever way you call it, whichever way you call it. Okay. So, first equation we're going to write. First equation, let's write it down. It's dx by dt equals sigma times y minus x. Okay. Now what I'm going to do? I'm just going to make a small approximation. dx by dt. I'm going to replace this by. Uh, me. Let me take the x. Let me take the x-axis. Dx is actually small difference between two points, right? So if I take this to be x naught, x naught, and this to be x one, the distance between these two will be equal to delta x. Okay. And now, and there is a small time difference between them. Okay. So I can write this equation as limit delta t tends to infinite ten, del, tends, tends to zero okay tends to zero delta x by delta t would be equal to sigma times y minus x fair enough fair enough and now what i'm going to do is that is that i'm going to uh, remove this i uh, mean this limit off and then we'll get an approximate solution so which is x naught delta x by delta t will be approximately will be equal to sigma times y minus x and now let's replace them with the former time step values so at the earlier time step that this was uh, x naught in the next time i mean after a time interval delta t the point will be x1 so this derivative if i take the form uh, forward difference i'll take this will be x1 minus x naught which will give me my delta x and, uh, and time step would be 
t1 minus t0 okay and this would be equal to sigma i mean approximately equal to sigma times y0 minus x0 because i because i don't i'm going to start i'm going to move from the earlier position to the pre to the next position so this will be my this, uh, so i have to substitute the earlier positions over here and now what i'm going to do is this t1 minus t0 is actually uh, is actually delta t i'm going to replace replace it with h so t1 minus t0 will be equal to delta t i replace that by h and what do i have what do i have is that i'll have x1 minus uh, x0 will be equal to i'll bring the h to the other side so it will be h times sigma y0 minus x0 y0 minus x0 and then i bring this x0 to the other side i'll get x1 will be equal to minus uh, plus x0 plus h sigma y0 minus uh, x0 likewise if i were to do the same procedure i'll get an e uh, if i take the second equation i'll do the same procedure then i can write y1 will be equal to y0 plus h times x0 in times uh, rho uh, rho minus z0 z0 min, uh, minus y0 okay and then z not z1 will be equal to z0 plus h times x0 y0 minus beta z0 okay so these are our numerical equation numerically integratable equation so i just have to remind that these are approximately approximately equal they are not exactly equal because we are taking an approximation over here these are approximately equal so these are the equations that we are going to use uh, inside our program to run the to simulate the, to numerically integrate this okay so with that uh, the theoretical idea set theoretical idea setting in let's directly jump into our program and uh, now start coding so if you all give me a second yeah first what first what we need to first what we need to do is we need to define some variables to start with so uh, declaring the variables okay so i need a, i need an integer i okay so sorry n steps to indicate number the number of time steps i need to ev ev evolve this equation and then i need an i okay um and then we need uh double h double what am i typing anyway i need uh, a variable t max t min and then h and then okay h and then i need seven more seven variables double which is actually uh if you look at this uh you set up over here we need we need this x1 x0 y1 y0 z1 z0 and z1 z0 and a variable okay and t which will come explicitly we'll just we'll just note it down x1 y1 z1 and then we need x0 y0 z0 and then a variable t so let me write these as uh, let's see values for for calculations and these are actually uh no, no. max time min time and time step these are for calculations and these are actually number of uh time steps and iterating variable and then finally i s and then finally i need four more variables i mean three more variables to store the parameters sigma uh sigma r rho and beta so let r be r be the value for uh, rho and s be the value for sigma and b be the value for beta so i'm going to write it down over here uh, system parameters uh, rho sigma and beta fair enough and now let's uh, set up simulation values 
what I mean by simulation value is here is like uh, we need we need to start put a, a, a maximum time and a minimum time and some time steps so to evolve this so I put the minimum time and let the let, let's start from zero seconds and uh, let's evolve this equation for like um, hundred seconds okay and then n steps number of time steps I'm going to have is like 10,000 time steps okay now with that being said now let's set up the values for the system parameters and remember this uh, lar this equation set will give us this beautiful but butterfly figure for rho equals 28 sigma equals 10 and beta equals 8 by 3 so we let's set up the values setting up uh, system parameter values system parameter values so I have R which is actually rho, rho should be equal to 28 and sigma S should be equal to 10.0 and beta B equals 8 divided by 3 fine and now uh, and now we are all we are almost finishing we are almost ready to start our loops we just need a few more things uh, calculating time step time steps because if you look at our equations with which we derived we need the value of h we need to calculate what h it is h, h, h is now if you're assuming an equal time step uh, equal time even time step and that means the ma time h step time h will be equal to maximum time in the minus minimum time that there will be a time interval and if i do and that divided by n steps will give me delta h will give me delta t or h so h would be equal to uh, maximum time which is t max minus minimum time which is t min and divided by n steps the total number of times time steps to integrate and now if you look at this equation over here if you look at this equation over here we need some starting value or some initial value to begin this numerical e numerical equation i mean numerical integration so we need va we need a value for x we need a value for y and we need a value for z okay so uh, we need to initialize this initializing the calculations so at time t equal to 0 I'm setting x naught to be equal to 0 y naught to be equal to 1 z naught will be equal to 0 so the thing is the initial condition should give me such that um, there should be uh, there should be some something non zero so that everything goes on and on here if i do if i choose x0 y0 z0 to be 0 comma 0 this equation first equation will be 0 second equation will again be 0 and third equation also will be 0 so i will be remaining the remaining in that point no matter how many times i evolve so i need some non zero conditions so i'm setting up this non zero conditions over here at least one of them should be non zero this x y z you can set them any value you want doesn't matter but if you set 0 comma 0 comma 0 they'll be there that uh, you won't get that um, butterfly and now what I'm going to do I'm just going to print the output okay and the output will be of the format print f and then we have percentage g uh, first to print the time I, I put a tab and then another percentage g to print the x value a percentage g to print the y value and another tab and following that you will put another percentage g to print to print the z value and then a backslash n so that uh, we go to the next line and we, uh, we we can we can write our values like x0 I mean time x0 y0 and z0 fine and now okay now it's time to get our hands really dirty and we are going to write the for loop to the for loop first thing we need to do first thing we need first thing we need to do is that we have to write these equations up since we need initialize this we have to write these equations up so uh, so for i equal to 0 we can start with i equal to 0 and i less than uh, uh, n steps so this will be perfect this will be enough i plus plus and there we go there we go and this is actually the for loop and now I calc I put the plug in the numerical equations calculating the next time step values so our x1 
now we can write this equation equations as it is without any modification so I have um, x naught plus h times I mean um, s in the star divide into multiplied by y naught minus x naught okay if you just look at the equations properly you will be able to find figure this out okay just keep the equations next to you so that you can cross check the formulas and then what do you have y naught y1 equals y naught plus h times and what do you have x naught times r minus z naught uh, z naught minus y naught and that's it and finally the last equation z1 will be equal to z1 I mean z naught plus h times uh, x naught star y naught okay minus b, b, b or beta times z naught and that's it we have the three equations ready and now what you're going to do is uh, see before we run this for the first loop we initialize them so for the second time we run this equation in this loop we need to reinitialize them so what we're going to do is we just have we just type we have to reinitialize them so reinitializing for the next time step uh, calculations so x naught will be equal to x1 y naught will be uh, y naught will be equal to y I mean y1 and then z naught will be equal to z1 okay this way we initialize this and then now what we're going to do is just going to print the statement again so that uh, we'll get an idea oh, we'll get an idea of what's happening okay there we go now this e now this program is officially ready so now let's give this program a, sp uh, a program a spin um, now we can actually if we just uh, compile this uh, no problem no errors no nothing okay so we are, we are good to go first what we are going to do is we just we have this uh, shell script over here I'm going to use this shell script to run run all of this up so the, there's a, just a usual procedure I'm just going to compile this file, file butterfly.c and then I'm going to build this uh, build this butterfly.c to get an executable and the only difference here is I'm just running this but I'm just going to run this butterfly.exe and then going to print uh, put all the output to this data file okay so I'm going to do this in two ways first I'm going to open up a terminal uh, terminal okay I'm just going to go to this path over here which is actually my C CD uh, desktop and then it's in C program uh, prog um, let's see um, C programs and then I have this 17 underscore chaos butterfly okay C in capitals and I have these files over here now I'm what I'm going to do I'm just going to um, compile the compile these files compile these files and stuff so let me just uh, comment this out for a while comment this out for a while and let's see I'm going to bash uh, butterfly dot sh okay and if I list them down I have this executable file ready so if I, if I do uh, dot slash butterfly dot exe exe I'll be getting this entire list over here I think I forgot something hold on oh I need I need to I mean increase the time step as well I just made a mistake you see if I looked at the output looked at the output the time part of it printed zero anyway if you look at it we we'll have the time we have the time value printed yeah the x value printed y value printed and z value printed for each and every time step so this will go on and on okay for the if you look at it there will be like 10,000 lines of code will be uh, from the starting to the ending there are like 10,000 lines of code answers 10,000 so time step answers so you can have that but thing is if I were to do this like if I were to run this like this uh, this is not useful so what I'm going to do I'm just going to I mean run, 
okay what i'm going to do i'm just going to put uh, direct all this output into a text file which i can work with so i'm to do that i just put this back uh, arrow key i mean greater than symbol and i put output dot dat and i press enter looks like nothing happened but if i look at it i have this file output dot dat over here and if i just look at what's in that file um okay um, cat will do okay cat will do output dot dat will just print me all the values all the values over here like from the beginning till the end so if you look at it we just have the values till the 100 seconds cool and now we have we'll use the python program which a uh, python program to run this i mean to plot this up so let me exit this out so now i have this in this bash script i'm going to execute this and put this into an output file at the same time i'm going to use this python program to plot this so this is my python file over here okay uh, just to give an idea what's happening these are some inputs okay i'm just loading the output file over output file over inside this program and i'm going to extract the times time x y and z i'm just putting the same initial condition as we have and i'm just going to plot this up this uh, particular line this line is the actual plotting line uh, this this is this will give me the actual plot whereas the, uh, whereas the remaining things make sure that my plot is pretty with all labeled and all okay so so what i'm going to do i'm just going to open a terminal again let me bring this over here so cd uh, desktop c program um, programs 17 chaos butterfly okay and then i have to call my python uh, which is actually in home for me my one i use anaconda python so it's in a different folder so i home maroon anaconda 3 and then what is it um, bin by um, python and then i call this fi this file over here uh, plot butterfly i press enter this should sh this should take a second and voila there we go this is a chaos butterfly and uh, don't close the don't close it yet so you'll get this figure and now with you if you have your uh, mouse cursor you can actually move this in 3d and see for yourself and if you look at it this is actually a very beautiful magni magnificent plot over here okay and now if i were to look at this look, look at this in this figure you can clearly see this these are like the two wings of a butterfly and now if i close this this program terminates and I also and if you look at it, there is this PNG file over here because I'm saving the plot. So let me show you that PNG file. So this is how the this is how I get. Now this is actually in 2D. The plot I mean sorry. This is actually in an isometric projection. So it, you, now with this image you cannot turn it uh, turn it around and see it for yourself. But in that original one you can have a look at it. Now this way we are done the program. And now what we are going to do? I'm just going to run this uh, shell script. So that all of this is automated and we look, do this for different values of different values. Okay. Um, let's see. Now if I run this, automatically do some, ca automatically do some calculation and automatically, sh I mean, uh, plot this up and show this for me. And the moment I close this image, automatically the program terminates. There we go. And now once you have this output.dat file available, okay. Once you have this file available, uh, you can use any plotting program to, you know, get this idea, uh, plot this um, butterfly. Um, I'm just using Python because I'm more convenient, I'm more familiar with it. You can use anything you want. Okay, there are other options to plot them are using Octave or MATLAB or GNU plot or any other, any plotting tool, whatever it is, you can do that. And this is how uh, you can write a simple um, program, program uh to uh, get uh, to um generate the lawrence butterfly solution and now as an as an exit as a thought process if suppose if i set the value of r to be something else so i set r to be equal to 14 and here i'm going to set r to be equal to 14 because i just want the image to be coming out perfectly and now if i run this execute now if i execute this if you look at it i don't get this butterfly solution anymore 
okay r is 14 for r is 14 i don't get this butterfly solution anymore and the solution itself is different the moment okay the moment i change the value to uh, to something else like 20 uh, like 28 i get this now i can what i can do i just go and play around with r sigma b by setting up different values i can play around with it now since i put r to be 28 again i set r to be 28 over here and run this there we go i get the i get the lawrence butterfly solution well hope you hope you guys loved this program thank you for watching uh, it was fun for me to work with this too in another tutorial i'll come up with another interesting video so till then thank you for watching and uh, uh, that's all i have for you guys in this one and uh, see you all next time till then take care